So in addition to the stronger dollar, Morning. of course, we've got these supply chain issues. We do have uh, the energy crisis as well uh, in pockets of Asia. If earnings, if the upcoming earnings season continues to come in at least meeting expectations, though, it's hard to see a scenario where stocks would trade lower from here. Yeah, in a sense, that's a, that's a very good way of actually uh, looking at the markets at the moment. So you're right, there's a lot of headwinds. We've got the stronger dollar, we've got the energy, we've got regulations in China. There's a lot of uncertainty. And uh, all of that has led to the underperformance of Asian equities throughout this year, uh, if you compare, for example, with the U.S. Um, but if you dig a little bit deeper, so you guys were just talking about, for example, some of the GDP growth forecasts being cut by economists on the road. If you dig a little bit deeper, you look at the earnings numbers, actually, in Asia and the forecast for earnings, uh, they actually look not too bad. We've got decent earnings growth, profitability is improving, margins are actually expected to rise this year and also next year. Now, you'd say, hey, uh, commodity prices go up, is that going to be a problem? Uh, maybe, but uh, on the other hand, I think there's this... Uh, companies have a bit of pricing power here and there as well. So um, um, it might well be that things shape up a, li a little bit better. So um, don't be too negative on Asian equities in that regard. Given the divergence that we see in central bank policy in this part of the world with a lot of, or at least a few, Asian central banks already starting their tightening cycles, what are the opportunities there that you see in those gaps? I think the way to, um, to look at it is also a little bit how people are positioned and how, how that is being reflected in markets. So uh, if you're talking about positioning, uh, we're neutral on China. I think being underweight on China, being too negative on China is, is probably uh, not worthwhile at the moment. There are certain sectors that trade at large discounts to valuations in Chinese property, for example. So um, uh, yeah, the outlook there is, is, is not easy, but at low valuations, you don't want to be too uh, cautious on, on China, so we're neutral there. Um, India is, is the other market that is rather expensive, so that's a bit difficult. Um, so it's not that I want to be overweight India, so we're neutral there as well. And that actually then determines to a large extent our positioning across the, the region. Uh, we like ASEAN, and we've liked it for a couple of months now, so uh, we see inflows there, people not fully positioned there, growth numbers are coming back. You probably got a bit of more kind of monetary stimulus coming through there as well. And we're more cautious on some of the other markets further up north, like Korea, for example. Um, uh, yeah, there is a bit mm. of tightening maybe taking place there as well, what you were referring to. Um, so right. that's uh, something we're a bit more cautious on. Uh, given the disappointing uh, GDP numbers coming out of China and perhaps the uncertainty related to the regulatory uh, crackdown there, what are some of the markets that are less exposed to the Chinese story and perhaps can offer some more value? Yeah, the markets that are less exposed to China, so if you, if you say, listen, uh, there's a lot of uncertainty with China, I don't want to be there. The problem is for Taiwan and Korea, they're heavily exposed. Most. A lot of corporates sell into China or they've got factories in China. So one way or another, they are heavily exposed. And you can see that in the markets. If China moves Korea and Taiwan, they, they take a bit of a lead from that. That's not the case in India. And I think that's one of the reasons why people have gone into India. It's, it's, it's least correlated. But then correlate. you call it expensive. China. So can you still yeah. go into some parts of the India market that are not as expensive? Yeah, you have to be very specific in, in India. So uh, that's, uh, that's not that easy. But on the domestic side, uh, kind of rural economy place, we think there's still a bit of value on the, uh, on the consumption side. And this is, I think, because uh, you're very right, so you go to India because you want to get away from China. I mean, it's rather expensive. <laughs> Where then do you go, right? So, and if it's really about a couple of stocks, if you're a large fund manager, what, what do you do? And that's why I think people are moving to Asia because that mm. is not so much exposed to China either. It moves on, around its own rhythm, you could say. So that's, that's, I think, one of the reasons why we see money flowing into Asian markets at the moment. Okay, so I'm a risk taker and I really want to go to China despite the uncertainty, then where do you go to? Are there any sectors that have already seen a lot of the downside pressure priced in? Would you see any value in some of that sell-off that we saw recently? Yes. So I think what we need to do, so the, the game of the, the story in China over the last two years has basically been about China Internet. And if you would have bought, say, two and a half years ago, your Tencent Alibaba, you did initially very well. And if you made sure that you traded around it uh, correctly about a year ago or something like that, you, you, you could have done pretty well on, on the way down as well. 
Um, but it, what I mean is that it was all about the large cap stocks. What we now need to do is to put them aside and we need to drill much deeper. Now, you can do that either by looking at all kinds of sectors and whatever. China property, for example, is very cheap, but yeah, will it move so quickly that it's very difficult to identify a catalyst at the moment? So what I think we need to do is to go even a little bit deeper. We need to look at industries that are consolidating. Uh, companies that are trying to reinvent themselves. There are companies that, that, for example, are in transport and move into smart cities uh, or into hydrogen or into uh, other sorts of technologies. They're readjusting themselves. There are industries that are consolidating, where a lot of people have left. Think about the airlines, for example, right? Um, so uh, look at the nature of those industries, because that's where pricing power is, or that's where growth is going to be, and that's where you can identify the opportunities. But it means that if you want to be in China, uh, yeah, you've got to dig a little bit deeper than what we used to do in the past.